kind of well, we knew, you know, we knew for a while that we were going to send him to hell. We right. knew, um, we knew before we got the pickup. Actually, the the early pickup was probably much more of a relief to the fans than to us because we were like, you know, if he's in hell and we get canceled, then sorry, you know, right, you know that's what you get for investing in a main character. Um, but, um, but you know, but we but we you know we we knew he was going to be in hell, and we knew you know in Supernatural we tend to do this. You need really big moves at the end of seasons to kind of send the next season off into a new direction. And, uh, and we had a mythology that we've been waiting to go into for a while that this will give us sort of the key to that door. Um, and, um, and it'll take us right into it in a way that we're really excited about. I mean, we've been, you know, I mean, I, everyone says this every year, and, it's, and, and, and most of the time they're lying and it's bullshit. And I, but I tend to be the first to say, ah, that episode sucked. But we're really, like, giggling like schoolgirls in the writer's room. I mean, I think we're taking the mythology into, like, a, a new piece of real estate that's pretty exciting. And to even just pick up the uh, series four months later and, and let the boys surprise each other again because they've been separated for a while. I mean, they, we haven't been able to do that since the first season because they're always so on top of each other that it's always like they always know what each other's thinking. So to have, the, have them keep secrets from each other again and, and have reveals about who they are and what happened in this four months that they were apart. Um, you know, and, and for us, I mean, the, you know, season four is really a season about mystery and slowly revealing mystery. And, you know, as, you know, as you said, it's, it's no secret that Dean gets out of hell. And we realized that on day one in the writer's room. So we said, so let's not, like, let's not be coy about that because everyone knows it. Let's get him out of hell. But the question is, let's get him out mysteriously and let's have the big question of the season or one of the big questions of the season be how did he get out and who got him out and why. And, and so we sort of quickly get past what everyone knows and we get on to the things that they don't know. So and then and then we reveal that out and sort of slowly in drips and drabs and in as the season progresses in a way that we hope we hope will be entertaining and if not go watch Grace. <laughs> I was wondering if the show was getting harder to write four years in, but obviously it's not. We're we're really energized. I mean, we feel like we've we feel we've tapped into something this year um, that has got us all really excited and feels very fresh and and everyone is kind of spitting out ideas and they're and they're good ones. So I, I think we're gonna I think we have an exciting season in store and, and, and you know and we're doing what we want to do and we're doing it without compromise and, and so I'm I'm excited for the fans. I mean they may say like Kripke's gone total batshit and, and it's terrible but I'm entertained by it. I'll say that. <laughs> I, I find this season entertaining. It's what it's something I it's something I like and so we'll see if everyone else likes it. Shake it up anyway. Like yeah. It's like the way Bruce Willis finally got to do what he wanted, and he made Hudson Hawk. Like, you know, so I'm going to do season four of Supernatural. It's going to rock. So you, um, with Ghostfacers, you did something really kind of different. Um, are there some other... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're definitely digging the... Um, we love to shake up our formula whenever we can. Um, we're doing... The third episode is uh, a completely black and white um, throw bla cool. throwback to the Universal Monster movies of the uh, 30s, so that'll be cool. The fourth episode after that is a time travel episode where they go back in time and they meet their parents when they were younger. Um, we have... I'm trying to think what else we're doing. We're, we, we just came up with this episode. Ben Edlund is writing it. it. It's like insane on a level that is, even for us, is insane where... Where it's a uh, the ta a town has a wishing well and everyone's wishes are coming true and there there may or may not be a seven foot tall talking teddy bear in it we're not sure yet um, and uh, so you know we we we're down with that I mean we we try not to be formulaic and we try to um, uh, keep people guessing and have fun so. Oh, um, so it sounds like the fourth season is going to be really great. Oh, cool. And you did say that you wanted to stop after the fifth. Yeah. Um, do you think since you're doing so well that you'd be willing to do more? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Really? I'm, um, you know, never say never, I guess. And, and you know, the, at this point, my contract is up at the end of the fifth season. And I, I plan on trying to go out on top rather than jumping, literally jumping sharks and bringing in <laughs> Raven Simone to play the cute little adopted orphan and then weddings in Hawaii. And I mean, you know, I would so much rather go out in a blaze of glory than slowly peter out into season nine X-Files mediocrity, quite frankly. And so, um, you know, I, I think no one believes me, and but I, I really feel like that would be a really real favor to the fans. 
I mean, better to, wow, that ended, and that was great, and that was a storyline that was over, and what a satisfying ending. You know, um, I actually feel Buffy did it pretty well. I mean, they, you know, I, I feel like they had a, it ended, and that was a great final episode, and I just would hate to have continuous storyline until the writing's on the wall and it's time to be canceled, and then you slap together some kind of crappy ending. I mean, I'd rather just go out bold. So, I, I don't know. I mean, me, Jensen, Jared, and my contracts are all up at year five. So, um, that's my plan. I don't know what their plan is. And, um, again, I, you know, if Henry Winkler's available, then we could, we could jump sharks all day long. Have you walked out the whole story to the end? We do know the story till then, yeah. I mean, you know, I'd be lying to say it's anything more than you walk into the beginning of every season with a basically a cocktail napkin sketch. You know, you know where it is and you know the big tent poles you want to hit. You sit down with the writers and you say, we're in L.A. at the end of the year. We want to get to New York. We want to stop in Chicago. But otherwise, you tell us what the map is. You know? And having that sort of internal, you know, actually very real uh, time limitation, do you find that that helps focus, you know, every season? Because you know you want to get to this point as opposed to, say, season four months when it was like, are we going to be on this? It does. And, you know, and it's funny. I mean, you guys will have this quote now, and then there'll be season eight, and they'll be like, yeah, now they're fighting robots. <laughs> but, um, so, but I actually find it... I find beginnings, if you look at the, all five seasons as like one big long movie, in the writing of any movie or TV show for that matter, beginnings are easy because you're launching everything, endings are easy, the middle's kind of shitty and hard to write. <laughs> and um, I, I feel like one of the reasons I think we're picking up momentum again, I, I, I have mixed feelings about season three, I think we had some great episodes, but I feel season, it was probably my least favorite of the three seasons up to that point. Um, and I think it was just because it was the middle and, and it's this weird transition point and now pieces are falling back and momentum is starting to build again towards something. So I think it's actually been a, a, a real magnifying focus on our, on our energy. Slight follow up to that? Yeah. yeah. One last question. You can follow up and then one yeah, more. Yeah, that's really so are you going to use a chupacabra at any point in time? <laughs> Dude, we can't afford a chupacabra. It's like, like, unless a chupacabra looks like a person who says, I'm a chupacabra. We, we learned really early, even after the uh, Wendigo episode, just don't mount creatures you can't afford to produce because they're just going to look stupid. And, and so better to have them in human form and then they have fangs or eyes or whatever. And like... Have it be done well, rather. Do it well or don't do it, is the plan. And that's why there's been no chupacabra. That's why our werewolves have yellow eyes and fangs and are otherwise human. Um, because just do it right or don't do it. And so, no. no. Every, every so often there's off-camera reference to the chupacabra two states over. And that's where they'll live. Yeah, which is why I think it's hilarious. All right, well, we do one more. Anyone? Anyone? No? Okay. We're good, we're good. Sweet. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming.